Introduction and History of Magnetic Materials The story of magnetism begins with a mineral called magnetite, the first magnetic material known to man. Its early history is obscure, but its power of attracting iron was certainly known 2500 years ago. Magnetite is widely distributed. In the ancient world the most plentiful deposits occurred in the district of Magnesia, in what is now modern Turkey. And our word magnet is derived from a similar Greek word, said to come from the name of this district. It was also known to the Greeks that a piece of iron would itself become magnetic if it were touched, or, better, rubbed with magnetite. Later on it was found that a properly shaped piece of magnetite would turn until it pointed approximately north and south. So would a pivoted iron needle, if previously rubbed with magnetite. Thus was the mariner's compass born. The first truly scientific study of magnetism was made by the Englishman William Gilbert, who published his classic book on the magnet in 1600s. He experimented with lodestones and iron magnets, formed a clear picture of the Earth's magnetic field, and cleared away many superstitions that had clouded the subject. For more than a century and a half after Gilbert, no discoveries of any fundamental importance were made, although there were many practical improvements in the manufacture of magnets. Thus, in the 18th century, compound steel magnets were made, composed of many magnetized steel strips fastened together, which could lift 28 times their own weight of iron. This is all the more remarkable when we realize that there was only one way of making magnets at that time. The iron or steel had to be rubbed with a lodestone, or with another magnet which in turn had been rubbed with a lodestone. There was no other way until the first electromagnet was made in 1825, following the great discovery made in 1820 by Hans Christian Ørsted that an electric current produces a magnetic field. Research on magnetic materials can be said to date from the invention of the electromagnet, which made available much more powerful fields than those produced by lodestones, or magnets made from them. In this course we shall consider basic magnetic quantities and the units in which they are expressed, ways of making magnetic measurements, theories of magnetism, magnetic behavior of materials, and, finally, the properties of commercially important magnetic materials. Many of the equations in this introductory chapter and the next are stated without proof because their derivations can be found in most physics textbooks, 